Hey everybody, it's Dave here from Climbing the Pocket. We have some breaking news today. The Vikings running up to the trade deadline and making an impactful trade. They traded for tight end T.J. Hawkinson of the Detroit Lions. He is now a Minnesota Vikings. And I have got Jonas Stark of CTP Germany on with me right after this. Time for Climbing the Pockets, Vikings Daily Sit Rep. Hey Jonas, I'm going to forego with the formalities and the how you doings. Get right into it. What do you think of this TJ Hawkinson trade? I really like it. And I like it for multiple reasons. First off, I think he is a very good fit for our offense and he will solve some issues that we saw uh, over the first few uh, weeks of the season because the Vikings have struggled mightily against teams who have been blitzing a lot, um, mainly because they really didn't have uh, the receiver where they can just... Uh, throw the ball quickly, uh, throw the hot route and uh, escape the blitz that way. And uh, I think Irv Smith is just a very different uh, type of tight end. And he isn't that bigger dude who uh, will uh, make those cont uh, contest catches over the middle. And uh, Harkinson can do that. He has had a rate of uh, successful uh, contested catches of above 50% in every uh, in the last three seasons. And I think this is very important uh, when teams continue to blitz the Vikings because now uh, they have that target they can... Uh, uh, they have the player they can target quickly and who can win those uh, contest catches because if you don't have that much time to get open, uh, you have to win those. And Irv Smith wasn't winning those. Uh, KJ Osborne wasn't winning those. And uh, I think Jefferson uh, has to be used in a different way. And uh, now they have a player who can take this role and i think this uh will help this offense uh immensely well i agree with you wholeheartedly he is both good in the blocking department and in the receiving department he was a first round draft choice by detroit uh out of iowa he's coming to us there's the old saying you always draft a tight end for the next team we getting him at 25. He's going into the prime range of what it means to be a tight end in this league. He is top of tier two tight ends that you would put in right now. He has the ability to move into tier one. I think this is a great move. We only sw basically swap some picks and move back around with uh, uh, 2023 and 2024. We gave a, uh, what was it, a third and a fourth, and we get back two fourths. And I think it's a good deal. He comes in with a salary cap right now where we only owe him $535,000 or something like that. We can still fit him in without messing with anybody else. Next year, it jumps up because he they did accept the fifth-year option to $9.8 I think it was. That is doable, and we can extend him and manipulate that more. What I see him as is he's going to be that safety blanket that Kirk Cousins always enjoyed when he had Kyle Rudolph here, especially when he first got here, right? When things are going crazy for Kirk, receivers are covered, say J.J., Adam Thielen, K.J., whatever. 
he can always have over the middle TJ Hawkinson ready to grab it. And as Damon points out, he's got great hands and an excellent red zone receiver. And we know how Kevin O'Connell has been scheming stuff up in the red zone and having another great receiver in the red zone is going to make things just so much better. So much, you know, for the push of this team to get deep, very deep, and really deep, hopefully, all the way in the playoffs. What do you think of Quasi making this move? Was it a all-in move, a mostly-in move? Or, you know, is he, I guess what I'm getting at is, is this a we-want-to-win-now move? It definitely is a we-want-to-win-now move, but it's not a reckless all-in move. Uh, I think you have to uh, have uh, that clarity because uh, they didn't, they really didn't give up uh, additional picks. They got the same number of picks back. Uh, they sent, they just basically moved down. Uh, and if the Vikings go to the playoffs and the Lions get close to the first pick, which they currently are, are projected to have, uh, it's just a little bit more than one round. They, uh, they move down and like, that's not, and it, that's not a reckless all-in move like uh, the Dolphins made today for Bradley Chubb. That's an all-in move. Uh, for the Vikings, it's once again, like uh, they approach the whole offseason, it's, uh, it's kind of being aggress aggressive, but it's not being reckless. And I think uh, they are still setting themselves up to... Uh, to make a, a, a bigger a bigger uh, rebuild after the, after the season because uh, they still have to do it. But um, yeah, it's kind of that competitive rebuild that uh, Crazy wanted, and uh, I think it's smart to take advantage of the unique uh, the unique setting of the NFC right now because. There really aren't very good teams, and even though the Vikings have a mostly mediocre roster, uh, they might still have the the third best team in the NFC right now. And as we and know, better. Yeah, and as we know in the playoffs, um, I wouldn't say that the Cowboys or the Eagles, which I would consider uh, consider uh, one and two right now. Uh, are locks to uh, make it far there because uh, Jalen Hurts is also unproven in the playoffs and teams will eventually figure out how to play these Eagles and uh, the Cowboys also have been a really good regular season team in recent years but they haven't really been successful in the playoffs and like that, it, it's really unpredictable which teams will do well in uh, the NFC playoffs this year. So taking this opportunity without being reckless was a really smart move. Mm -hmm. And you're getting a guy that's one of the best. He's a top 10 tight end in the league. Some say top five. Like I said, he's number one with yards per catch. He's he. We've got him for not only this year, it's not just a one-year rental. We also have him locked in for next year. The Vikings can pay him the nine point eight million or whatever the fifth year option was, and go on from there, or they can work on a renegotiation and extend him for longer, say five years, and then you've solved the tight end problem, which we were running into. We had all hoped Irv Smith would be that guy, but Irv Smith, it was announced today, went on IR. He'll be on IR indefinitely. They expect him to be out at least eight to 10 weeks. So that takes you to the end of the season. We obviously needed another tight end. I think this was a fabulous move. And Quazy in this, and just about every single trade he's done, he's got the new player for at least two years, you know, this year and next. And there's no difference here. He doesn't do it like other teams where it's the one-year rental and then... 
right? So I think this is a very good move. I think it helps the Vikings offense. It gives Kirk that security blanket I talked about earlier. It gives Kevin O'Connell more weapons to use in that illusion of complexity type deal he wants. This Hawkinson is good over the middle. He's an intermediate range guy. He's not going to take the top off, but he's great, you know, low and intermediate. He's great over the middle. That takes something. Not all wide receivers like running over the middle because there's generally linebackers that like to hit you. Tight ends relish it, right? And he's one of those guys that does that. He catches the ball extremely well. He gets into the end zone quite often and frequently. This is a good move for the Minnesota Vikings. I applaud Crazy and the team for making it. With that, let's wrap this up. What do you think? How do you think he's going to do against the Commanders this weekend? Coming in on a Tuesday. He's got just three days to learn the playbook. Do you think he's going to get some time? Yeah, I'm... I don't think he's going to start, but I think he will get some plays. I don't think they're just going to roll out Johnny Munt the whole game. I think uh, you can do some stuff with uh, Harkinson uh, immediately. Uh, even if you just ask him to run certain routes and uh, be in for certain passing concepts, I think he can make an impact a wide array uh, we have seen it with the 49ers who uh, had Christian McCaffrey up uh, already uh, like uh, four or five days after he was traded. And I don't think that's off the table. And especially with the Irv Smith injury, I think he's going to play right away. And uh, yeah, I think they will get him involved at some capacity. He will probably not full capacity. Uh, he will be like in his full-time role when they uh, face the Buffalo Bills a week later, but I think he will have an impact against the Commanders. Outstanding. Well, I want to thank you for joining me today, Jonas. Sorry for the short amount of time to get this show together. Sorry to the viewers that there was no pre-pub on this, but we wanted to talk about it. Jonas wanted to talk about it. He hit it, hit me up earlier today and said, let's talk about this. We waited to the end of the trade deadline to see if the Vikings had any other moves. They did not. There's been many moves across the league, more than usual. You can find the information on that on your favorite website or Twitter or wherever you'd like. But with that, what that do we say, buddy? <laughs> and none for the Packers. You got that right. What do you say, buddy? Score Vikings. Score Vikings. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, and ring the bell, and rate us on your favorite aggregator. And a special shout out goes to our partners, the Daily Norsemen, where the best Vikings content can be found, and to Lake Monster Brewing. Home of the best beer in Minnesota. Skull, everybody.